I'm going to talk about some options for small joint replacement in the hen. So specifically, I will talk about the metacarpal phalangeal joint and the proximal interphalangeal joint and uh, difference in arthritis, history of joint replacements there, what are the indications and what are the outcomes. So just some anatomy. The metacarpal phalangeal joint or the MCP joint is an ovoid joint. It allows motion in two planes, flexion and extension and abduction and adduction. Also allows for some rotation. The PIP joint, proximal interphalangeal joint, is a bit different. It's a simple hinge joint. It only allows motion and flexion and extension. So as, uh, as was discussed earlier, the incidence of arthritis in the small joints of the hand is most common in the distal joints, the distal interphalangeal joint. Next is the basal joint of the thumb, followed by the PIP and MCP joints. Um, but this doesn't necessarily correlate to the symptoms that patients have and the surgeries that are performed. So let, let's first talk about MCP joint arthritis versus PIP joint arthritis. So MCP joint arthritis is seen most commonly in patients with rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory arthritis. It's the most, those are the most common causes in uh, arthritis of the MCP joints in the index through small fingers. And you have, this is the classic deformity in a patient with severe uh, rheumatoid arthritis. You have ulnar deviation, meaning the joints are uh, pushed away from the hand, and also volar subluxation of the joints. <coughs> the soft tissues are destroyed, the bones are destroyed, and it's a significant functional problem and causes quite a bit of pain. You can also see this in the MCP joint of the thumb. In contrast, osteoarthritis, post-traumatic arthritis, and crystalline arthropathies like gout are, are far less common. PIP arthritis is, again, a different animal. This is commonly caused by osteoarthritis and post-traumatic arthritis much more frequently than in the MCP joint. And uh, rheumatoid and inflammatory arthritis can also be uh, causes at this joint. So what are treatment options for MCP joint arthritis? So again, we have our, our usual armamentarium of conservative measures, including splinting, injections, anti-inflammatory medications, Topical medications can be quite helpful here, topical anti-inflammatories, and again, DMARDs in the rheumatoid population have really dramatically reduced the incidence of disease. Surgical options are, are um, more controversial. So historically, joint resection arthroplasty was performed, and this means, again, literally cutting out the joint, but it doesn't leave patients with a good functional result or stability. Fusion has been done in the MCP joint. This is an example of a, a fusion here, but as you can imagine, the MCP joint of the hand does not tolerate loss of motion. You can't make a fist, cannot grip things, and this is a poor um, option in this particular joint. And then implant arthroplasty has been tried with uh, some success, actually. So the first designs, uh, again, were done by Dr. Swanson in the 1960s. This is basically what they looked like, literally a silicone spacer that would take the place of the MCP joint, and it's flexible, so it allows some motion while removing the arthritic joint and uh, providing some stability. This was traditionally used in rheumatoid arthritis. However, the drawbacks are that it's subject to rotation and lateral deformity, and it depends on integrity of the soft tissue envelope around the joint. And as all of the silicone uh, implants have shown, there's a reactive synovitis that, that occurs and can lead to some problems in the adjacent soft tissues. Again, also, the implants can fracture. Um, this is an example of a fractured uh, silicone implant that needed to be revised. And the uh, published reports show 1 to 26% implant fracture rate for all silicone designs. Today, the uh, silicone implants, there are three uh, main designs. There's the Swanson design, which has been around the longest, the Avanta design, and the Nuflex design, which all uh, have different uh, benefits and drawbacks. The Swanson design has been around the longest. It still is a good option in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, and it's, the, it's one of the implants of choice. Synovitis and implant fracture, although they sound bad, they're easily revised and easily treated. And this is a, an implant that provides predictable pain relief and good function. The, this is not a great option in younger patients who require higher grip strength. So we'll talk about some other options. There was a, a second generation of MCP joint replacements designed by FLAT. Now these were metal replacements. 
you can see it looks sort of scary on the x-ray. It looks kind of like a couple dinner forks put in someone's uh, mm -hmm. MCP joints. And this was a simple um, uh, hinge design. Th this implant did not uh, withstand the test of time and failed because it had a non-anatomic uh, center of rotation. The hinge had a high degree of friction. There was a lot of metallic debris which accumulated, and the implants did sometimes fracture. Today, there are two modern designs, um, or w one, one concept, and a, few, a couple companies have two designs based on this single concept. And uh, this is the surface replacement concept. Um, so the, the most recently um, studied and sort of used is the pyrolytic carbon MCP implant. This is an implant that attempts to more uh, naturally recreate the anatomy of the MCP joint. It's made of a material called pyrocarbon, which has a high, has an elasticity of, um, modulus of elasticity that more closely matches the bone. So in theory, it may subside less, it may have less problems. It's more anatomic. Uh, and um, this is a good option for patients with less advanced rheumatoid disease, post-traumatic arthritis, and primary osteoarthritis. So what are the indications for MCP joint replacement? Patients, anyone can have arthritis on an x-ray, but patients with symptomatic painful arthritis that have not uh, done well with conservative treatment. So these include patients with rheumatoid disease, inflammatory arthritis, rarely osteoarthritis or post-traumatic arthritis, and again, we have similar contraindications um, to joint replacement surgery in these joints. We do not perform them in patients with prior infection, with bad bone stock, or patients that don't have good joint stability. Just a little summary of some of the newer implants. Um, so the silicone implant, again, a good, a good option in patients with rheumatoid disease. Chung, in 2009, published uh, a study, one of a series of studies, looking at outcomes for this implant. So this was a prospective randomized or prospective multicenter study. It wasn't randomized of 70 surgically treated patients and 93 non-surgically treated patients with rheumatoid MCP joint arthritis. So the surgically uh, treated patients actually did better. At one year, they uh, had significant functional improvements. They started out at a lower uh, baseline, and uh, at one year, eventually reached the. Uh, reached significant improvement and the level of their medically uh, treated cohorts where they were at uh, baseline. Ulnar deviation and extensor lag cosmetically improved, which uh, may result in some functional improvements. Now, so the other joint replacement I talked about, the pyrocarbon arthroplasty. This is a reasonable option in the MCP joint. I'll talk later about the PIP joint where it has not fared so well. But another study at the Mayo Clinic in 2007 looked at 142 MCP pyrocarbon arthroplasties. Here you can see an example of a patient with no joint space here at the MCP joint, and this is what the joint replacement looks like. In this 142 uh, joint replacements, uh, pain was reliably treated and functional scores were quite good. There was a 90% satisfaction rate at one year, and uh, the range of motion was preserved, um, and in some patients actually improved. Um, in comparing the osteoarthritic patients versus rheumatoid patients, they fared about the same, although the rheumatoid patients had some concerning radiographic findings. At one year, which is, again in our field is extremely short follow-up, the implant survival was excellent. 141 out of 142 um, d uh, survived. However, um, we do not have published reports on how these do 10 or 15 years down the line. The complication rate also was quite low. So one other um, factor in patients with rheumatoid arthritis with severe deformity, we know that the, um, MCP joint arthroplasty can reliably improve deformity. And this is something that patients who have had the surgery rate as uh, one of the biggest benefits, more so than pain or functional improvement. And here you can see a patient who has, um, has had joint replacement surgery on this hand, but on the right uh, affected hand has the typical ulnar deviation and volar um, uh, deviation of the MCP joints. So PIP joint arthritis. Now we're really getting to uh, less and less gain for uh, joint replacement arthroplasty. But th this is an option for patients who uh, have failed conservative, who uh, have failed conservative management. 
Um, we'll talk about other surgical options. So fusion actually is a reasonable option here in the PIP joint, mm -hmm. unlike the MCP joint. It provides, it can put the finger in a functional position and you can still have grip and pinch uh, function. Implant arthroplasty has been attempted and has had less set success, unfortunately, than MCP joint replacement. There are other limited options that I won't really talk about, but they include joint resection arthroplasty, interposing soft tissues, or even taking joints from other parts of the body, like the toes, and transferring them. So the first designs of PIP joint arthroplasty. This picture may look similar to the MCP joints because it essentially is the same. Um, these were the early silicone uh, arthroplasties, again designed by Swanson. Um, and these implants had uh, some problems. <coughs> Implant fracture was problematic. It was as high as 82% at five years in uh, an early series. Other complications included failure of the hinge, angular deformities, erosion of the bone, and again, synovitis around the joint. There have been newer designs which have not really fared uh, much better. These are the surface replacement designs. Um, now there are one, there are two uh, main uh, designs. One is uh, by uh, Avanta, and it, it looks basically like a mini total knee if you look at it. There's a cobalt chrome um, component and then a polyethylene component that's coated, that's uh, covered with a thin titanium shell. The bent, the, there's another implant that's again a pyrocarbon implant, and again it attempts to recreate the natural anatomy of the PIP joint, which again, if you look, it looks a bit like a knee. The, the benefits of these implants are that they preserve the collateral ligaments, they, the materials match the elasticity modulus of the surrounding bone, they're minimally constrained, uh, but they do have problems. So uh, the pyrocarbon implant, again, it has a similar modulus of elasticity to bone, it can um, reliably improve pain, and, but range of motion, less so. The PIP joint is a joint that tends to get very scarred, and uh, range of motion is not, I would argue, reliably restored. Complications have been reported, and really over the past three, four years, an explosion of papers have come out that have shown that uh, the complication rates may be <coughs> unacceptably high, especially when they're uh, used in the wrong patient population. And the complications reported include squeaking, uh, contractures, dislocations of the joints, and implant loosening. The, um, the second um, surface replacement implant, the Avanta uh, design, uh, again, this has an ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene uh, base covered by titanium and a cobalt chrome um, uh, proximal uh, phalangeal component. Looks like a total knee. It's nice in that it, uh, less bone resection is required, uh, but uh, we'll review some of the um, outcome studies that have shown a high rate of complications. So who may be a candidate for PIP joint arthroplasty? Patients with rheumatoid inflammatory arthritis, osteoarthritis, or post-traumatic arthritis, again, who have failed conservative treatment. But uh, we have all the usual contraindications, and I would add another contraindication. In the index finger, this is not a great option. This is where fusion probably performs better. So what has the data showed? Um, Bravo and uh, Dr. Rizzo and other, co other uh, colleagues at the Mayo Clinic in 2007 reported some early results of the pyrocarbon joint replacement. So 50 pyrocarbon PIP joint replacements were reported on with a minimum of 27 months of follow-up. Satisfaction was fairly high. Four out of five patients uh, were satisfied and pain scores improved. Uh, the range of motion was not uh, improved post-operatively, but it was preserved. There was a 28% reoperation rate and an 8% implant revision rate. More recently, Dr. Stern um, reported on has been reporting on a series of uh, patients, and uh, in 2011 reported the longest outcome uh, with an average of 4.6 years of follow-up of the PIP uh, pyrocarbon arthroplasty, and the results were less encouraging. Pain uh, still persisted in some patients. Range of motion was actually less postoperatively than preoperatively, and there were many complications reported. These included implant fracture, dislocation, squeaky joints, loosening, and joint contracture. Six joints required revision at the time of the publication, and based on the, the poor medium-term results, the authors no longer use this implant. 
Murray and other colleagues at the Mayo Clinic recently reported on the Avanta design, and uh, they reported, again, mixed results. In 67 patients, while the mean range of motion was acceptable, 40 degrees, um, there was increasing failure rate as time went on, with a 16% failure rate at 15 to 25 years. While there was low post-operative pain, there were 22 complications reported. A recent uh, prospective randomized trial uh, that just came out uh, compared the pyrocarbon implant, the Avanta implant, and the silicone implants, and found that while all implants led to improvement in pain, there was no improvement in range of motion in any group, and there was a markedly higher complication rate in those with the two surface replacement designs. Adams, um, in 2012, looked at all the best evidence that's around for PIP joint replacements um, and took the five best studies and found that while PIP joint replacement um, improves hand pain, grip strength, it does not reliably improve range of motion. In fact, some patients lose range of motion. Postoperative uh, loosening of these implants occurred in 12.5% and complication rates occurred in almost a third. And they concluded that the effectiveness of the PIP joint replacement is not established today. So lastly, I'll talk about um, in this specifically in the example of the index finger. So some um, research that I've done recently looking at fusion of the index finger PIP joint versus joint replacement. We looked at a series of 76 patients that had either osteoarthritis or post-traumatic arthritis with five uh, plus years of follow-up who were treated either with joint replacement or with joint fusion. Here's an example of joint fusion on um, your uh, lower left here of the PIP joint versus a pyrocarbon arthroplasty on the lower right. So we found that predictably fusion uh, lost range of motion as is the goal of the surgery while um, arthroplasty preserved range of motion. There was about a 40 degree range of motion in uh, those with arthroplasty. But there was a greater improvement in pinch strength in those that had the joint fusion. Also, the complication rate was significantly lower in those who had joint fusion versus joint replacement. There was a four and a half times increased risk of initial complication in those that underwent joint uh, replacement versus arthroplasty, versus fusion rather. This is uh, in black the fusion group and in red the uh, joint replacement group and the time to first complication. So we found that while joint replacement of the PIP joint of the index finger offers the benefit of preserving range of motion, pinch strength is not as reliably restored and the complication rate is significantly higher. So in summary, looking at MCP joint replacement and PIP joint replacement, MCP joint replacement um, preserves motion. It is a much better option than joint fusion and I do believe that it's a good option in this particular joint. It also improves deformity in patients with rheumatoid disease. However, there's the, the complications and revisions we've been talking about, although much less than PIP joint arthroplasty. PIP joint arthroplasty, the benefit is for patients that really want to preserve range of motion. Um, it's a reasonable option and it will remove pain, but the complication rates have been extremely high and uh, joint fusion really is a, probably a better option in most of the PIP joints of the fingers. Uh, and this is not a good option in the index finger. I think in the future we may see uh, continued advances in implant design um, offer some benefits, but um, again, we have a ways to go in the small joints of the hand compared to other joint replacements. Thank you.